So we have the new Alta UI. This is the site that you might be familiar with already. Um, so what I wanted to show you is a few things about how to actually implement one. So if you want to see some examples, you click here on Gallery and Patterns and you can see all sorts of pages. There's also a section here called Design Patterns or UI Patterns. And this is where you can find details about specific implementation. For example, how do you design a home page? How do you design a dashboard? And for example, master detail. So master detail is something that a lot of us has been doing in ADF world for a long time. And then when you scroll down, you see that indeed those type of pages look much nicer than the pages that we've been creating so far in ADF. So you might be wondering, OK, how do I go about building this page? So we're going to switch into JDeveloper. And the first thing you want to do, this is you just created a um, Fusion-based application. First thing you want to do is switch to the Alta UI. So you go to the Trinidad config file. And where it currently says Kairos, you can switch it to Alta. And this is assuming you're using JDeveloper 12.13. Then you can go ahead and create a new page. And one of the nice things is that among the page templates that we provide to you, there's this tablet first template, which is ideal for usage with, Atla, with Alta. So just choose this one, click OK, and let's create a new page. When the page comes up, you can already see that it has the Alta look and feel in terms of color scheme. So that's good. Um, I'm going to switch to the source tab. Um, as you can see, all you have here is a page template with nothing special here. Right? So let's start um, creating our page. So the template has a few sections. Uh, the start is actually what is on the left side of the page. What you might want to do is set sizes for those sections. So if you click on the page template here, you'll see properties for everything that you can control. So in, if we look again at the design that we're aiming to achieve, uh, we have a start section. We don't have an end section. So we can take the end section and set it to be 0. And we can take the start width. And those are, again, properties of the template. And we can set this one to be, let's say, 220. And this is just a fixed size for those areas. Then um, the center is where we're actually going to do our layout. If we look again at the layout of this, we can see we have one row and two other rows. This row spans. Here we have two sections, each one in a different size. To do this kind of layout, you want to use the panel grid layout. Okay, so take this one, drag and drop it into the center area. Okay, and you'll get a wizard, and the wizard can help you design your grid. So we actually want two columns, but we actually want three rows. Okay, click next, and what we want to do now is we want one section of the row to be bigger than the other, so one column bigger than the other. Let's do this one as a Actually, let's do this 40 and the other one 60. OK, make that. And then the other thing we want to do is we want to define a span. So from here to here, we want to have a single cell. So from here to here, a single cell. And this layout is exactly what we saw in the design on the Alta side. So we have it here. Now, in order to create the boxes that you can see here, each one of those, I'm going to use a panel box component. So take a panel box and put it inside each one of the grid cells. So this is our base layout. We can save the page. And let's run it just to see how it looks. OK, so when the page comes up, we can see our boxes. Um, but the problem that we see is that they don't actually stretch to fill out the area. How do you get them to stretch? Let's go back into JDeveloper. And for each grid cell, okay, there's a property called H align. And what you should set it to is stretch. So we'll go over each one of those 
and set the grid cells to be stretched. Now save the page, switch back and refresh our page in the browser, and we can see the updated layout. This is exactly the layout that we're aiming to get. Okay. One thing here is that here you actually need a different color for this box. How do you achieve this? Again, this is quite simple. Just go to the box. It's the first box in our page. And you can set the background color. For example, let's set it to be medium. We'll set one of the other tables to a different color, just so you'll see the differences. Go back to our browser, refresh, and you now can see the different colors here. All right, it's time to start to add some data to our page. So, we have the data control, and in the data control we have the regular department employees. Okay. And what we're going to do is going to have department in the first box. Let's create a form. This one would be a read-only form. And instead of having it one after the other, we actually want two columns, so since we have four items, we can set the rows to two, save, compile, reload, and here's our first box. Okay. In the second box, we want to show a detail of the employee working in this department, so we'll drag this over here. Here we can create, for example, an updatable form. We'll add row navigation, and we'll remove some of the columns. That's our second box. And the third box, we want to show a chart. And this is important. Um, Alta puts a lot of focus on providing data in visual ways. So make sure that your pages actually consist of things like charts, gauges and other components. Okay, um, we're going to use one more piece of data. We're going to use the salary of an employee and we're going to drop it into the last box here as a gauge and one of the new components is the circular status meter gauge. We're going to use this one. Um, we know that salaries go between 0 and 25,000 and we can add thresholds. So let's say that if the salary is smaller than 10,000, we want it in red. Otherwise, the salary is OK. We can have it in green. OK. One more thing that we want to do, if we look again at our page design, there's this list on the left side. And again, you'll notice that in modern Alta design, the list component is used much more than tables. So let's add a list to our page. And this would go actually into not the center, but rather the start section of the template. So a list of department into here. Again, inside the list, you can create a grid layout. I'm going to create a simple two column, one line layout, um, have the first one at 70% and the second one at 30%. And here you can actually specify which fields are going to be shown in each area. So we'll do the department ID and value and the department name, like this. All right, if we save everything and compile, go back to our browser, reload the page, and here's our page right now, almost ready. Okay.
So one thing to notice is that I'm not doing the reruns of my application. I do save, compile, this does hot swap, and I can still see my page even though I added data and stuff like that. Take advantage of it if you're using the JDeveloper 12C. All right, so one thing that bothers me is that I can't actually select things in my list. So let's see how we resolve this. It's actually quite simple now. Um, you go to the list component and you enable selection, right? But then you need to tell it what to actually do when you select. So if you scroll down, there's a property here called selection listener. Right? On the side, you can choose to do a method expression builder. And then just select your department view and the make current operation. If we save again, compile and reload the page, we can now select different departments and see the data changing in our environment. All right, one more thing that bothers me, this little thing is, as we can see, it's very little. So we actually want it to be bigger and we want it to be in the center of this box. Okay, so how do we do that? This is inside our center, we have the status meter. So why is it small? If you actually look at the code, you can see that's by default, it's 50 pixels by 50 pixels. Probably want it to be 150 by 150. Okay. And the other thing we want to do is we want to actually surround it with a panel group layout. So take the status meter, drag it into the panel group layout. For the panel group layout, you can set some properties. For example, set it to have um, horizontal align to be center, set the layout to be vertical, and then you'll get your component to actually show up in the center with a bigger layout. One other thing that you can do to achieve Alta UI, um, buttons at the bottom are not cool anymore. If you look at the design that we have in many places, you'll see that those buttons need to actually be in other location, like here. Okay? How do you get this to work? Very simple. Go back to your application and locate the employee form that you created. There's a facet there with the navigation button. Okay? And what we're going to do is instead of having those buttons in the footer, we're going to take them and put them in the toolbar that is associated with the panel box. Okay? Uh, the other thing is that right now we have too many buttons, so let's actually remove the first and last option and just keep the previous and next option. Like this. Compile. Go back to the browser and reload our page. And now we can see the buttons are up here. And as we scroll through data, you can see things changing. Simply, let's do um, two more things. Uh, if you look again at the Alta design, we have those buttons up here that actually do a navigation usually between forms in our application. How do you create those buttons? Very simple. Uh, the template that we're using already has an area for that. The area in the template, the facet is called app nav. So just take a panel group layout, drop it inside the app nav, okay, and set the layout to be horizontal, and then drop a couple of buttons directly into this area. Now the buttons, um, we look okay and function okay, but if you want to have a better look and feel for those buttons, you might want to assign them a style class that we provide called app nav bar button. This is a built-in style class that we provide. And then save, compile, go back to your page and reload it. You'll see that this button is now a little bigger then this button, because this one has the style class. So again, assign it to the other one as well. 
Um, other things that you might want to do, um, the boxes that we have there are right now um, able to collapse. And if you actually look at the design in the Alta design, we don't want them to collapse. So to do that, go to your panel box, okay, and set the um, property called show disclosure to false. Okay. Another thing you might want to do is instead of showing just a text here, you can actually show, for example, the name of the department. So copy the name of the department binding and paste it here. Okay. And we wanted to have the same style class for the other button as well. And there you go. Now you have a complete application available for you to work with.